Hello and welcome. My name is Jordan and I'm a clinical physiologist at the Functional Gut Clinic. In this talk, I'm going to try and break down the seemingly endless world of probiotics. Probiotics are one of the most popular ways of trying to improve our gut health, but many people are unsure of which ones to take. And it's no surprise when there is an overwhelming number of options. I mean, this is what the yogurt section typically looks like at the supermarket. Yogurts are a popular form of probiotic, but which one would you choose with so many options? It's always important to understand the difference between prebiotics and probiotics. Probiotics are live microbes that, when ingested, exert some sort of health benefit, whereas prebiotics feed and nourish the microbes that are already in our guts. Ideally, a good probiotic will contain prebiotics too. For example, Fermented foods like sauerkraut contain both a prebiotic and a probiotic. The cabbage is the prebiotic and the fermenting lactic acid bacteria, they are the probiotic. So we should all regularly include fermented foods in our diet, but here are some tips on how to use and select them. Firstly, when eating fermented foods like kefir, it's best to eat them over a few days and not in one sitting so we get a regular introduction of species into the gut. And when buying fermented foods, always buy from the fridge. For example, sauerkraut from the shelf may have been pasteurised and contains things like vinegar to improve shelf life, but this just kills the probiotic bacteria. And lastly, try to buy with as minimal ingredients as possible. The more ingredients it has, the more likely some of those are, are going to be irritable to the gut. A diet rich in plant foods is probably the best way to improve our gut health. Prebiotics are found in many of the plants we eat regularly, like inulin in garlic and onions or fructans in wheat, but these are considered high FODMAP. And if you look at the previous slide, most of those prebiotic foods are also considered high FODMAP and they can actually aggravate symptoms in people with digestive issues like IBS and SIBO. Now, it's still important to, to get these prebiotic foods in your diet if you do suffer from these digestive issues. And there are prebiotic foods that are well tolerated. For example, people with IBS can tolerate green or firm bananas, but not ripe yellow ones. Now, green bananas contain a prebiotic called resistant starch that feeds our gut bacteria, whereas the starch has been converted to sugar in ripe bananas. Another way of getting resistant starch into your diet is, is to actually cook your potatoes and then eat them cold. This is because the resistant starch uh, re reconstitutes once the potatoes cool down. Um, and scientific research has shown that certain species in the gut also metabolize polyphenols. Polyphenols are antioxidants found in colorful plant foods and the highest in dark berries like blueberries, which also have the benefit of being low FODMAP. Uh, pomegranates are also uh, another food high in unique polyphenols. And a few studies have shown that pomegranate extract or pomegranate juice can actually increase the numbers of beneficial species like bifidobacterium and lactobacillus by up to 20%. And pomegranate juice also inhibits the growth of pathogenic bacteria like C. diff. Um, so this is something that uh, many people can incorporate into their diet. Just remember not to buy pasteurized uh, because this actually reduces the polyphenol levels. Probiotic supplements are a way of introducing specific species into the gut. However, in the colon, there are anywhere between 6,000 to 10,000 species, so it can be hard to introduce new strains in numbers great enough to have an impact on gut health. Diet should remain the priority of improving diversity, but probiotics can support the gut microbiome when used as a dietary supplement. So when considering which probiotic to choose, it's hard to know where to start. There are capsules or liquid probiotics and Studies suggest liquid might be slightly better, but there is no significant difference. The number of live bacteria in each dose is measured by colony forming units or CFUs. And they can have anywhere between 1 billion to 10 billion or even 50 billion CFUs per capsule. So some sh studies, uh, they haven't really determined the optimal number of bacteria for probiotic effects yet. So it might actually be better for, to focus on strains. Um, but should you choose one specific strain or a probiotic with 14 or 15 strains? Now, not all strains are the same and different strains can provide different health benefits. Antibiotics are probably the most detrimental things to gut health. 
Most antibiotics wipe out the gut flora and reduce microbial diversity in our guts. Scientific studies have shown that antibiotics increase the number of gram-negative species because these species are more resistant. And these tend to be the more pathogenic bacteria, which cause di diarrhea, things like E. coli, Salmonella and C. diff. And if you end up with an overgrowth of something like antibiotic resistant C. diff, then this can be very detrimental and hard to get rid of. Research has shown that taking probiotics within two days of starting antibiotic therapy is most beneficial. So don't wait until you've finished the antibiotics to start taking them. Two species that have shown to prevent antibiotic diarrhea are Lactobacillus rhamnosus and Saccharomyces boulardii. Now Saccharomyces is actually a yeast so competes with bacteria. Brands like Optibac and Florastore contain well-researched strains of Saccharomyces and it's also beneficial in IBS. So nearly everyone with IBS has low microbial diversity and reduced numbers of species in their guts. Probiotics can be a useful way of achieving diversity in the gut, but a recent study has highlighted that probiotics in IBS patients tends to go one of three ways. So around 60% of patients saw some sort of benefit, 30% saw no change, and in a small percentage, the fact the symptoms actually got worse. And the same applies to SIBO where probiotics can cause brain fog in around two thirds of patients and also increase gas production. So there have been hundreds of clinical trials of probiotics in IBS, but the species with the most positive trial outcomes appear to be bifidobacterium species like B. brevi, B. infantis and B. longum, and some lactobacillus species like L. acidophilus and L. plantarum. The probiotic VSL3 contains all of these and has been well researched in IBS. So if you want to take probiotics to improve health generally or, or just maintain gut health, then I would suggest for, um, finding specific strains that you want to have in your gut. So it's possible to do something like a, a stool test to see which species you're low in and try and up their numbers. Or you can just choose specific strains that have been scientifically shown to have health benefits. So here are a few of my, my personal favourites. Acosmantia is a species that was only just discovered in the last decade or so. Now, scientists believe it might actually be the caretaker of the mucus layer that lines uh, our intestines. Uh, and this is because the bacteria actually eat the mucus, causing more to be produced. So the mucus layer is very important for immune health and it also acts as a barrier. Uh, studies have shown that people, lean people, have a, a thick mucus layer, whereas thin mucus layers are seen in patients with diabetes and obesity. Uh, and acosmantia numbers are also low in obese and overweight individuals. Uh, in one study, those with higher numbers of acosmantia experienced increased weight loss, lower cholesterol, and better control of the blood sugar. Um, and since uh, it enhances mucus production, uh, acosmantia may be beneficial in leaky gut. Another interesting species is Fecal Bacterium prosnitzii. And that's because um, this bacteria produce significant amounts of the short chain fatty acid butyrate as well as salicyl salicylic acid uh, and these are both potent anti-inflammatory compounds so it's no surprise that this species is often low in patients with inflammatory bowel disease um, unfortunately there's not many readily available probiotics containing fecal bacteria prosnitzii however there's been uh, some studies in uh, extract from golden kiwi that actually boosted uh, fecal bacteria prosnitzii numbers so another amazing species uh, is Lactobacillus ruteri. Uh, the probiotic Biogaia gastris contains two specific strains of L. ruteri with well over 100 clinical trials. So this probiotic has been shown to reduce breath methane levels and improve constipation. So it could actually be useful to take if you, if you have intestinal methanogen overgrowth. And also L. ruteri uh, has um, amazing benefits for the skin and the hair. So in an animal study, mice had the fur shaved off and those fed with a probiotic yogurt containing L. ruteri grew the hair back uh, thicker, faster and shinier. And animal studies have also shown that skin wounds repair much faster with L. ruteri probiotics. It appears that this bacteria stimulate the release of the hormone oxytocin through an immune, uh, an immune pathway that starts in the gut. So oxytocin is the love hormone, but it also promotes uh, skin repair and gut inflammation, prevents gut inflammation. So here are some final tips for using probiotics. Make sure you store them as per instructions. 
Some need to be stored in the fridge uh, and some are better in a dark cupboard at room temperature. Don't put them in your bathroom cabinet because the moisture and temperature change can damage the cultures. Also, don't combine different probiotics. One species may outcompete the other and they are not usually researched on being taken together. Take your probiotics with a meal as food buffers the acidity of the stomach. But a recent study published in The Lancet showed that dead probiotic bacteria was actually better than placebo at alleviating IBS symptoms. So the beneficial effects of probiotics might be reserved whether dead or alive. And if you're going to try a probiotic, most studies trial them between four to eight weeks. So give it at least six weeks before judging if it's right for you. Lastly, if you're going to take antibiotics, remember, take probiotics at the same time, not after. This might be critical in preventing you from developing things like dysbiosis in the future. So in summary, probiotics are not a one size fits all. What works for one person doesn't mean it'll work for you. Diet should remain a priority to boost diversity in the gut. Even when following a restricted diet like low FODMAP, remember things like polyphenols in berries can boost good gut bacteria. Probiotics are unlikely to benefit SIBO and managing SIBO with things like antibiotics and diet are the most scientifically sound way to treat it. Remember to do your research before buying any probiotic.